Okay, um, I welcome everyone again to this another exciting um, episode of our presentation on on YouTube. Um, today we're going to be looking at some tips that are very exciting and very important to actually discover through the course of our lithium exploration within the six months. And we find out that it's actually a tip I need to share with you guys, and it works very well. I've used it in several plastics. Um, my name is N.C. Gideon. Um, I'm going to share you some tips, about six or five of them, some of the important tips to finding Nigerian lithium bearing structures. This is very important because um, most of the places we are looking for pegmatite are actually, uh, some of them are in the forest and in the bush, and the clue to them are not easily found. They are by measures going to the field or moving around the bush and all that. Imagine the bush of the West, how many places are you going to go to? So these things are going to be helping you remotely to find in, uh, some of these structures before actually going to the field to do some geological mapping and all that and identifying or doing some ground map mapping. So um, uh, without wasting time, please always remember to subscribe, like, and share our videos from this. We get uh, your encouragement to move um, forward. But before we go on, you need to note this relation to structures. Very, very important that most of the LC pegmatite bodies show some structural control. So that is why, that is actually why most of the time we use the structures first of all before any other thing. So, and secondly, you need to understand that at shallow crustal depth, pegmatites tend to be intruded along anisotropic, such as some faults, fractures, and foliations, and also um, bedding. You need to know this. Then also know that the high grade metamorphic structures of pegmatite are typically concordant with regional foliations and they form lenticular and elipsoidal. Um, body. So you need to know this. The fourth one, you also need to know that the pegmatite bodies are connected along or near major deep crustal faults. Then finally, another aspect of pegmatite structures most of the time involves correlation between structures and degree of fractioning. Most of them are actually enriched with tantalum and all that. These are some um, preceding notes you need to know as consigned to relation to structures. Now, we'll go to the tips. Tip number one is that, first of all, you need to look at alteration or signature enrichments. When we're talking about alterations, mostly remotely, you can look at your alteration regionally, actually, by using some of combining some of your radiometric data and uh, uh, magnetic data and some other remote data like Hasta images and all that. So you'll be able to um, be able to find out where the alteration signatures. If you are used to finding these minerals, you see the alteration signatures are actually very, you know, um, they are very, very, they are very unique. If you look at this, this is actually what we've interpreted here. Um, if you look at this one, we've used different ratios here. We use combination of potassium, thorium, and uh, uranium here. Mostly, they actually found, you know, along very close at the boundaries of enrichment of of any of these, especially potassium, um, uranium, and thorium. So thorium are not actually mobile, but potassium are actually highly mobile. And uranium are actually found in most of these uh, most of these uh, of this of this rock. So you need to pay attention to that. Secondly, the secondary structures that are actually crisscutting perpendicular to the northeast structures are very, very important. Um, in Nigeria, most of the structures, the real regional structures, uh, actually linked to some of the mobilizations are in the northeast direction. So you need to look at auxiliary structures. Okay. If you look at what we've done here, you will see um, interpretation here that I've gone. This is the major structures here. You can see the major northeast structures here. But if you look at it, there's an offset of northwest, and there's another northeast here, which is actually the major bearing um, structures. And you can see some. In, was cut in here and also here. So at this particular location, it became our one of our points here. I'm going to show you another another one. Number three here, linked to any close foot full structures. Um, you know, it's better you walk from known to unknown. If you have any known location and all that, it becomes an interesting thing for you also. But in some cases, you might not have. But if you have, Five kilometers, seven kilometers, six kilometers, ten kilometers. It's a very okay. When we try to look around from here, we'll be able to we'll find out that there's some there's some structures that are already producing around here through artisanal work and other. We're able to define detect this. 
So it gives us more confidence that yeah, that these structures we're actually targeting here is very interesting, very good. By this time, we're not actually going to the shoot. We're actually looking for locations and all, all that. Then the fourth one is proximity to granitic activity of lakes. Um, mineralization actually linked to um, fractionization of uh, orogenic granites and all that. The extreme fractional crystallization of orogenic granites Actually, you need to link this to any granitic body. Look around, you see, and strong um, granitic activities around uh, your yeah, structures. You see that right. here. You can see this is actually the known location we found out. This is a um, location where there are some are interesting granitic bodies, and uh, it's just not too far, just about two, two kilometers um, away from the location. You need to look at radiometric signatures. Which is very important, the potassium, the uranium, and the, um, the thorium. These are very important. Although this doesn't actually, this is the suffix, this is the surface feature mapping uh, tools, but it has helped so much in the sense that it helps so much in nutrition. You can see here, we use some interesting uh, radiometric combinations of uh, um, uh, uranium thorium here. Um, we also applied um, uranium potassium here. We also applied. Uh, Thorium um, uh, uranium here ratios here. We also apply thorium potassium here. We also apply potassium uranium here, and we also apply potassium thorium here. Now, apart from that, the um, very strong uh, um, analytical signals also found in that locations. So you can see this is um, the radiometric structures, um, structures and signatures are also very important. But if you look at here, we have we able to use um, more of uh, um, the ratios of uranium to potassium here um, to do so many things along this particular way. Also, there are possibility of you trying to combine, um, do what we call uh, compositions of lakes. You might start seeing some discrete signatures. If you are very conversant with so many other locations you've done before, you'll be able to see how some of these signatures actually work in detecting some a pigmentite are rich locations. First thing you need to find out some of the elevated elements here, which is, you know, for beryllium, the boron, the, the, the fluorine, the magnesium, the tin, the rubidium, the phosphorus. When you actually um, finally ground through tin and you're able to see some outcrops and you test for this, most of the time, the lithium you're looking for is not at the suffix. So when it takes for elevated, um, if it takes for this element and they are elevated at the suffix, you start, you need to start digging some of those locations to, to, to get some interesting and deeper samples to get to get to what you are actually looking for. So these tips actually work remotely just for you to, and a fast way for you to actually pinpoint some locations and know and have um, a focus on actually where they are going to. So you can see these are some of the um, some of the outcrops we actually located when we go to the field using some of these tips. This is just one in many of them. Um, um, this this some of the sites we found some of the we're working to found some um, distance away when we got there. As you can see, some what we actually meanwhile we've actually known that this some of these sites exist before. You can see some of the sites. You can see this is you can see an interesting um, samples here. I think the I think the shootings on this on this sample. This was just recent work we actually did. You can see the dates. Um got it. I see the shootings and interesting samples. See the conzites, see the Chespa and the biotites. And see the shootings here. See some of the interesting outcrops were actually detected remotely before going. Now, now some, some of the old, old work that are actually done there. See, they are an interesting site. A lot of work are actually going on there. Things have actually been moved from here. Yeah. So from here, we're able to get an interesting locations um, this, without going there in the first place, just from using some of these lookout tips. Um, okay, that is just what I want to share with you. Um, Please don't fail to subscribe to our YouTube channels as usual. We can keep bringing some of these tips to you. Have a nice day, and don't forget to do some, um, send us some comment questions and make inquiries if you actually want to find a location, or 
you have some places that you are actually having issues with. You can do some a lot of uh, interpretation repeatedly, and maybe you can have a headway to finding your next little. Thank you.